Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Activities for People Living at Home with Dementia. My name is Gail Snyder. I'm the Executive Director for Dementia Friendly Fort Worth. We are proud to offer this program with funding from the Area Agency on Aging and United Way of Terry County. These programs are also recorded and are made available for future use through our YouTube channel. And today our guest is Nancy Strickland, and we will be talking about the color of fall. Nancy, hey. all yours. Pull back a little bit so I won't be so enormous. So welcome to the Eamon Carter Museum this morning. We're, I'm, I am happy to um, not report because I know you guys know this, but we have had a little snap of fall, which is wonderful to feel that a little more crispness and coolness and maybe dryness in the air. Uh, I hope you've been able to get outside and enjoy that, I have. In fact, I went this last weekend uh, to Missouri. And so oh. they, they were a little bit further along with that. Well, yeah. But I love the change of season. So um, when you think about seasons, when I've been asked the question and people say, what's your favorite season? I always say the next one coming up because I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> so Nancy, where, where did, you did you go? Pardon? Where in Missouri did you go? I went to Can my daughter and my son-in-law and two grandchildren live in Kansas City, Missouri. Okay. They love it there. And you know, there are a lot of things that are a little bit similar about, especially the part that they live in because they live in an older part not too far from this, the city center. So there's a lot of things that are, that are to me a little bit like Fort Worth. It's a comfortable place. I think that's one reason they were happy and they're happy to live there. Having grown up in Fort Worth, they feel comfortable there, but it was nice. Um, no leaves falling yet. That's the part I don't like. What, what season do you guys like the best? I like fall. You like fall too? I, one of the reasons I like fall is football. I don't have any football paintings to show you, but I have enjoyed a couple of college games. Nobody that I was particularly caring about. What about you, Nancy? What do you like? I'm not sure. You're not sure? No. Uh, I also love winter because I love the holiday season. That's, I hope this year we're able to have a fairly normal holiday season with some travel and some seeing some family. Patrick, what about you? I like the fall. It's it's the coolness after the summer. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it is a relief after the summer. And were you here last week, uh, Patrick? Did you see yes. the presentation Peggy gave on hunting and fishing? Yes. Yeah, my my uh, husband, who is is my former husband, my deceased husband, loved the fall because he loved hunting. That that. Labor Day weekend, when he would get out with all of his buddies that first weekend, and you know, hopefully it wasn't 100 degrees, but uh, that's usually when then dove season started and he really enjoyed that. So anyway, well, let's take a look at this one. This is a painting by an artist whose name is Sanford Robinson Gifford. And it's one that I really, you know, that Hunter's Return I talk about frequently. This one, not so much. Maybe one reason because it's small. I'm going to try to zoom in really, really close. And you guys tell me if you see the people. Yep. Yes. You see yes. them? Yeah, right over here. They're on this um, bluff, and it's actually a real place. Uh, this is likely a commissioned work of art <clears throat> uh, that was commissioned. I didn't even realize this until I was sort of studying it for this particular purpose today. But um, a, um, a man in, in, in New York State in uh, early, well, the early part of the Civil War in um, 1860 built the first, and you can barely see it down here, but he, he was responsible for the development of the first suburb. I always thought of suburbs coming about um, in our country after kind of after the end of World War II when people were coming back and maybe be getting being able to go to college on on their 
uh, World War II um, military funds and so forth. And lots of people were moving out of big cities into the suburbs. I know that vacationing out of big cities, that first began to happen uh, right after the Civil War. So this, this idea of moving out, I don't think of a, a city in the 1860s as being one that would you know, be a modern urban city, but I guess probably the cities were less pleasant in the 1860s without some of the technology we have now than, than they are now. So anyway, this was likely commissioned for the person that developed that first suburb area. And there's a beautiful park here in the center of it. So notice the colors that we're seeing in fall. Those of you, well, Paulette being a painter and you, some of the others may have also studied like the color wheel and we know the complementary colors, the ones opposite each other on the color wheel. But here we have analogous colors. We have colors that are in the same family, just different shades of those. Let me go a little bit closer. So if you were trying to think of different words to describe the colors that you see here, the different colors, what are some things you could come up with? Yellow. Yellow, yes. Orange. Orange. Reddish orange. Harvest colors. Orangish red. Okay. And Patrick, what did you say? Harvest colors. Harvest colors, yes. I think umber is a color that's a word that's used sometimes to describe what we see here. So we see all these oranges and yellows here. I mean, we see a little bit of, and it's hard on, on the video conference for you to see it, but we see a little bit of the, the blue, the hazy blue in the sky and a little bit of the green along there too. Um, you think this would be a quiet scene or, of course it's a quiet scene, that's kind of a silly question to ask you, but very peaceful looking. Is that water down in the valley? So actually down here is this park that was developed as part of, of this development. And over here in the distance, let me get close again for you. Those are low, a low mountain range. I don't think there's any water here at all. This is on Eagle Rock in New Jersey. So Paulette, did you ever paint, uh, do paintings where you were depicting a particular uh, time of year like this or place? Uh, I did uh, a lot of floral arrangements and things okay. like that. Yeah. I, um, More still lives than outside. Oh, okay. oh gosh, yeah. I, I never did people. <laughs> okay. Oh, and you didn't do, yeah, these people are really, really tiny. And I don't know if Peggy mentioned this, about the Thomas Cole Hunter's return, but he wasn't that great at doing people. So his people were usually pretty tiny too. Now I didn't have this one on, on tap, but when I was sort of thinking on my feet and thinking, well, we'll do something um, <clears throat> instead of the Hunter's return, do something a little bit different. I'm not gonna tell you the name of this. Martin Johnson Heat is the artist, but I, I want you to, to Tell me about what you notice first, because the name just gives it away. What are these? Can you tell what they are? Haystacks. They haystacks. are. They're, they're haystacks. Uh, there's one here, some smaller ones in the background, one here. And there is water in the back of this one. This is a marsh. This is marshy land uh, in Massachusetts. This is called Marshfield Meadows. And I assume since we are gathering hay, we're in the fall of the year, wouldn't you say? Yeah. yeah. We're not seeing the beautiful colors of fall. One of the things that Martin Do Johnson he did that was so beautiful in his paintings, and let me see if I can get up here. Notice those thunders, that, those clouds at the top. Let me get a little bit closer. Either a storm is coming. Yeah, a storm is coming in this one. And I'm going to pull back out again. Something that I learned in studying this painting, and I've never been to this area of the country to know much about this. Have any of you been to this area of the country? No. Where is it? Something that I learned is that, you know, this, this hay grew, oh, excuse me, wrong button. This hay grew in, sorry to make you dizzy. That's as close as I can get, unless I pull the card up. You see the little 
the little horse drawn part back here. Yeah. That's will load hay on it. But something that I learned is that while they would harvest the hay in the fall of the year, let me pull this back now and get back in the, they would harvest it in the fall of the year. They um, didn't transport it out of this marshy field until the winter of the year. Any idea as to why that might have been done? What was the question again? They would harvest it, they would harvest the hay and make the haystacks in the fall. But then they didn't actually transport the hay out of the marsh until the winter. Make sure it dried. Yeah, make sure it dried. That would be one thing. The ground was too soft for the wagon. You're exactly right. They would wait. I didn't, I never would have thought of that. They would wait until the ground froze because of the weight of the hay on the, on the, on the horse-drawn carts there, and they'd have to transport it to where it might be needed in the winter of the year. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this one for just a minute, <clears throat> because I bet you that Peggy didn't talk about this, and one of my favorite, my favorite things to talk about with, with this is how it shows the change in the season. And of course, I know you are all seeing the change in the colors, but I'm going to get really close to this because I'm not sure Peggy would have mentioned. Right here by the house, by the little cabin. Whoops, wrong side of the cabin. Over here. What do you see here that's letting you know that we're changing seasons? There we go. Is that pumpkins? Little well, hay bales? Pumpkins, but yes, it is a little garden that they've cleared. Uh, and so we're seeing, and, and they're actually green. I know that's hard for you to see. So we're seeing lettuces or cabbages or maybe spinach or something like that, corn in the background. So we're seeing their harvest just like we saw in the Marshfield Meadows harvest. We're seeing the change of the year. In fact, this painting, one of the things I, I love, love, love about it, what is that? Oh, let me get that off my screen. One of the things I love about it is that it is all about change. The change of the little boy growing up into a man, going hunting with his parents, the change of the season. And actually, um, Thomas Cole was commenting on the change of the landscape in general. Did Peggy talk about that? No, I don't think so. So, you know, like, uh, how the, the, these people came in, they had to clear the trees um, in order to uh, have the wood to build their cabin and to, to create enough light to have a garden. And at the time this was painted, it was painted in 1845. At the time it was painted, um, there was so much expansion going on in this country. We were moving out west. And while Thomas Cole was was actually looking at a mountain named Mount Shakura. Uh, and, and in fact, this is not a particular place. Like the view from Eagle Rock that we looked at first, the, uh, Gifford, um, the Sanford Gifford painting is a, was a particular place in New Jersey. This is not a particular place. So Cole would just take these different aspects of a landscape and combine them together. But he was commenting on how our landscape was changing. Now, I'm gonna just turn back to it one more time. So do you think he is commenting in a positive way or a negative way or both? How does he feel about Western expansion? Well, since he's part of it, he must think it's okay. Okay. And you know, Western expansion in a sense in, in the early industrialization of this country was a really, it was a, and even now, is a very positive thing, commerce and growth and all of those things, but it has its drawbacks. So at the time this was painted in 1845, uh, in, in this area of upstate New York that he was living in, he was living in, um, well, totally lost the word. The word that I'm looking for is he was a Hudson River School painter. 
among a, a, a group of, that were painting in that same area along the Hudson River. And <clears throat> at that same time, they were clear cutting the forest, like totally cutting down all of the trees without regard to um, the, the beauty of the environment, or, you know, like for building just like we do now in some cases, but not in all cases. And we know that Thomas Cole felt that not only because of the way he painted, but also he wrote about it and he lectured about it. He lectured saying where it's not necessary to take down trees um, and you know, to change the landscape completely. This may be necessary, but where it's not necessary, he warned us against doing that. And I, that was something I learned too, since coming to work at the museum and studying this painting, I didn't think about there being conservationists and environmentalists in the early 19th century, and maybe even before that. Okay, the rest of what I'm gonna show you that's fall today is on a PowerPoint. So let me go to that, actually show it to you this time. Thinking good this morning, got things going here. So what I wanna do is right here. Can you see my screen, my PowerPoint? It's running in circles right now. Oh, okay, it'll be there in just a minute. Trying to figure out where I could stand to be not that obtrusive to other people. Oh, it's there. And here's our first couple that we looked at. Here we've got the color of fall. Who are we looking at here? A white birch. Yes, we're looking at the, a white birch tree by George O'Keefe, and I know I've shown you some other O'Keefe paintings. Um, Gosh, if right. you hadn't seen the words white birch, would you have known that's what this was? Oh my God, no. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe not. Uh, I've had children say that this, to, to them, it looked like um, uh, arteries, <laughs> veins, uh, or maybe it looks like a brain or whatever. We can see the little leaves there. So I know we've talked about Georgia O'Keeffe and her time in New Mexico. I know we talked about her when we did the program on painters and place, but she also lived, to, summered in, um, in the Northeast prior to ever moving to New Mexico on Lake George with her husband Stieglitz. And um, she would go out in a canoe did you ever paint in a canoe, Paulette? Uh, no. <laughs> she would go out in a canoe and look back toward the shore at a particular um, uh, white birch tree. And she painted it multiple times, just like she painted that Rancho's church that we looked at earlier um, multiple times. So um, it's also similar to the Rancho's Church in that it's very cropped. Paulette, can you talk about that when you, when you maybe did a still life or something that was very close cropped? Uh, say again what you want me to talk about? Oh, like when you maybe did a still life that was very closely cropped? Yeah. Um, Where, go ahead. I just kind of, I don't know. I, I know, I really... I, that's okay. I, I just, it's, oh, I, yeah, yeah, I guess because I, I, I did some floor, flowers that instead of doing the whole bouquet, I just did one. Of course, that's right. Like just like, like Georgia O'Keeffe's flowers, or instead of doing the whole tree in this case, she focused in on just a few of the, the, the white branches and the, um, and the yellow leaves there and gives us the impression of the white birch tree, but not the whole tree. I'll be right back. Okay, so um, Nancy, did you ever go to New Mexico? Yeah. You have? Yeah. I, I haven't been in years and years. I don't know that I've been to New Mexico since I moved to Fort Worth, which was like almost 30 years ago, but I used to go and the trees there, there's a tree there that has a white bark on it like this. They're aspen trees. Do you recall seeing aspen trees? These white barked trees. Yeah, I just think they're beautiful. And there's some tree that grows right here in Fort Worth 
um, that has a white bark like this that I think is pretty. Oh my goodness, Paulette, what do you have there? Something that looks similar. You have a beautiful yellow tulip. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Oh, well, thank you, because I painted it. I figured that you did. It's beautiful. <laughs> I like that, it very much. Well, thank you. You're very kind. I like that a lot. Did we lose Patrick? No, I'm here. Oh, good. I'm glad you're still there, Patrick. Okay, so let me tell you about this artist. Scott Gentling was one. Oh, are you familiar with the name? Uh -uh. Okay, Scott Gentling was, uh, is from Fort Worth, was from Fort Worth. You can see that he died in 2011. And he and his twin brother were very well-known um, uh, painters during their lifetime. And they're becoming even more and more known now. Um, I chose this one. He, they did a whole series of um, bird paintings, the birds of Texas. And we had them on exhibition here. I think they were, they were on exhibition back in March when, um, when the museum had to close. But you can see, you can read on the screen that they're watercolors. Uh, they're opaque and transparent. Of course, the graphite is that it's just a drawn picture first. But I've never seen a watercolor that looked like this or like this series. I, I know it looks like a photograph or maybe an oil painting, but certainly not a watercolor, particularly looking at the pumpkins. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's obvious why I chose this one because of the pumpkins and the, and the painting. These are rufous sided tohi or tauhi, I'm not sure, birds, but all the birds in this series that they did. And you can look, you can go to our website and see a little bit more about the, the, uh, the Gentling brothers paintings, but the museum ended up being gifted with um, their archives and, um, and this full series of watercolors that they did. And then in about mm, two years from now, we're going to have an exhibition of a broader um, collection, not everything that we would own, but a broader collection of the, the Gentling Brothers work. So any of you birders, bird watchers, no, but my son-in-law's father is. Okay. I, I'm a bird watcher and I look at them and I love to listen to them and look at them, but I don't know what they are. <laughs> I don't identify them that much, but I do enjoy, you know, feeding the birds and having birds around. But I, the, this whole series of pictures that the Gatling brothers did of these birds and they painted together. Sometimes they would both work on the same painting even, but the whole series, is really interesting in that they add something to it, like in this case, the pumpkins, uh, to create interest and maybe even also to give us an idea of scale. Uh, they add something, it's different. They were very inspired by the Audubon birds, um, but those Audubon birds don't have much of the, the surroundings of a natural habitat of the bird like these birds by um, the Gentling brothers. So I'm curious, what kind of material is the painting on? Is it on a canvas? Is it on paper? It would be on paper. This is a work on paper. So, you know, works on paper can't be exhibited as often, you know, paintings may hang. Oh my goodness. <laughs> my cart just kind of broke off at the bottom, but I'll just leave that there for now and keep going. But um, well, and well. <laughs> this, uh, what was I gonna say? An oil painting might hang in the museum for years and years, in years, hundreds of years. And it's not as delicate and it's not as, um, as now if you hung one in, in full sunlight, it's going to fade and it's going to receive some damage from the sun over time. But a, a water, a, an oil painting is much more durable. A watercolor like this, it, it can only be shown every, every, I, I'm not going to say how many years, but not all the time. So those were exhibited, but they won't be exhibited again for years and years. They'll be kept in cold storage. So yes, it's on paper. It's watercolor on paper. Let's look at this one. Now, remember me talking about Elliot Porter? 
Elliot Porter was the photographer who traveled the world, you know, was a scientist, a medical school student, and a, a, a physician, a research physician, and then, and then traveled the world and painted. And I showed you mostly landscape scenes from a distance, but he also did these beautiful artistic um, um, combinations. That's not the word I'm looking for. The word I'm looking for is compositions. Compositions up close of things in nature. And this is one of my favorite, these beautiful maple leaves. I wish we had, well, we do have maple trees here, but they're the smaller, the smaller version, I think most of them, and they have to be shade trees. But the shapes of nature and the colors are just really so lovely. Any comments on this one? It's beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful. This I is a well, yeah. This is this maple. is a photograph. I lived in New England for a while and the maple trees up there are really pretty. Oh, I guess so. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, yeah. I was about to say I thought this one looked like a photograph. It is. Yes, this is Elliot. This is one of Elliot Porter's and this this dye imbibition print that is the particular photographic process that he used to create this. And in fact, it's a process that he developed, that he created. And then this is our last one. <gasps> you love this? Oh my God, yes. Would you like uh, to get in this? No, I just want to stand there and look at it. I don't want to take it wet. Now, if you were 10 years old, would you want to get in it? Oh, 10 years old, I was terrified of water. I absolutely oh, were, okay. was terrified. I would, but... You can probably, I have, I have our pictures there that are covering up my um, view of the name of this, but notice the name of this Robert Glenn Ketchum photograph. Anything scary about that? A toxic, a toxic waterfall. Water. A toxic waterfall. Robert Glenn Ketchum, we had an exhibition of his, I'm going to say maybe 12 years ago, he's a contemporary photographer. You can see he was born in 1947 and is still living. This was- mere infant. Yeah, this is, you know, was it 30 something years ago that he took this picture. And he was an activist and an environmentalist, just like our Thomas Cole that we were just looking, that we looked at the Hunter's Return. Robert Glenn Ketchum um, worked on lots of different projects, including he, um, uh, I think during Reagan's pre presidency, there was a push to eliminate the clear cutting of wood in the, there's a rainforest in Alaska. I don't think about rainforest being in cold places, but uh, in Alaska and, and his phot photographs of that with all the trees felled um, and the work that he did and others helped in getting some legislation passed and then signed by, I think um, it was Reagan, that, that eliminated that. And then he also, this is a, a national recreation area, not a national park, but pretty close to a national park, national recreation area. And the water was so poisonous from what was being dumped into it upstream that even if one wanted to play in this waterfall, you wouldn't have been able to. But I think the inter one of the interesting things about this, this photograph is that it's a combination of the beauty of this beautiful fall foliage and the beautiful waterfall. I heard one of you gasp when you first saw it. It's so beautiful. And then knowing that it, it's toxic at the same time, it's a shock to our system. And this photograph was it actually, you can see on the cover of a book that, that Ketchum put together called Overlooked in America. You might wanna look that up sometime. Um, what is this? What? Which part? Let me move this. What's what? I don't know. It's got little round things. Little right. round things. It looks like a structure of some sort. Back right. here? Yeah, right there where your arrow right is. Right there. Let me look yeah, a little. Right, right here. And then right I, there. You know right what? Here. And over here too, maybe? Yeah. I never noticed that. I don't really think it is a structure of any kind. I know I can probably have a little bit better view of it than yours. Um, but even right up here, it looks almost like steps above that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's possible. I just, I hadn't seen that before. And this kind of looks like a light reflecting off of something shiny. I don't know. 
Oh, oh right here? Oh, yeah, right there. Yeah, it does. It yeah, looks well, almost right there. It looks it, so well, y'all can see this better than I would have assumed. It, it it looks almost metal, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I can't make this any bigger because of it being on the PowerPoint. And of course, this being a photograph, I saw this when we had the exhibition. This this is one of the ones that we own in the collection. We own two or th two or maybe three Ketchum photographs. But there was a whole large exhibition. But you know, the ones that we own have been in cold storage for 10 years now. At least someday they'll come back out again. So the the area in the space over on the right side between the leaves of the tree mm -hmm. almost looks like the side of a mountain rock formation. You know, how the different colors. Mm -hmm. It could be that. But the other kind of looks like some kind of building or um, yeah you know the one the one on the left does look more man-made and the one on the right looks more natural or organic and what do you think about those beautiful leaves oh they're gorgeous they are that you know i love how they you know they it seems like in other places in the country the beautiful colorful leaves and more in the north they hang on just a little bit a little bit longer than it's like here they turn and they fall right off <laughs> we don't see those colors for very long okay i think that's the last yeah that is the last thank you for joining me today and oh, thank you for joining us let's stop the screen share okay and um this will be my last time to be with you all well nancy we have truly enjoyed our uh, sessions with you and the art that you've shared with us and oh, given us an opportunity to explore the art that you've shared. And I hope that someday, and, and you all have my name, I'd love to show you around in person. If you want to come to the museum, I'd love to do All right. Well, hopefully we can, we can someday plan an in-person meeting where we all meet together at the museum and then have lunch. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all for that. <laughs> and I'm glad to see another group joining us, Janie. Janine, good morning. Oh, Janine, yes. Janine, are you also a painter? Uh, I've painted some in my life. I'm more of a photographer. Now. Okay, okay. I knew I'd met you before, and I knew you were an artist of some kind. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you all goodbye. All right, thank we'll you, Nancy. You. Nice getting to know you. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. You've done a great job. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. That was great. So let me share with you what we have on schedule for tomorrow. We talked a little bit about this yesterday. Tomorrow is Cookie Conversations, but we'll be doing something a little bit different because we are actually making lemon zucchini bread tomorrow so join us at 10 30 and then i also want to let you know if i can get my chat box to come back up um, i have shared in the chat box with you the link if you'd like to join join me over at the cafe we can chat a little bit more about the artwork or whatever you want to chat about it's a different room. So you have to leave this meeting and then the link that I've shared in the chat box, put that in your browser and join me in the other meeting. So I will yeah. not be here tomorrow. You will not be here tomorrow. Oh, I'm so sad you're gonna miss it. Yeah, me too. We can <laughs> still send me a sample. <laughs> I have to go get my driver's license. It's not, I'm not I, I can't drive any, so anyway. Take a, take a book because you'll be there for a while. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, we, right now. They tell us we have an appointment, whatever that means. <laughs> whatever that means. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. that whatever makes that it means. a little bit shorter because last summer I had to go in person to renew mine mm -hmm. before all of this pandemic and it was still a long wait. Yeah. It always is. So. Well, you know what they say, good things come to those who wait. That's true. 
So I'm open. <laughs> All right. Well, y'all have a great rest of the day. And if you have time, join me over in the Fifth Street Cafe Zoom room. And I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Right.